because when I am fasting, I have made a decision that I am denying myself of natural thinking. And I am taking upon myself the spiritual thinking. Amen. And so we want to begin to pray. Today's session is about unbelief. And unbelief is a hindrance to prophetic destiny. Look at Hebrews chapter 3. Look at how it exalts that today, if you will hear the voice of God, harden not your heart. So if I give you a prophetic word tonight, please, God willing, by tomorrow, start a fast. Or next tomorrow, start a fast. Let it become a pattern. The moment you receive a word from God, sit on it in prayer and in fasting. Don't sit on it with your belly full. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 13, when the seed is sown, the enemy comes to steal it. So you fast to ensure that the seed is well sown into your spirit. Amen. So out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be settled. I can't leave you with one scripture that talks about how to deal with unbelief. I've shown you Matthew chapter 17. So that's one witness from the Lord Jesus Christ. The second witness for you comes from Matthew chapter 4, which actually, while talking about, continue from chapter 3, talking about unbelief and defines the rest of God. From verse 9, it says that, there remains therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, right? He also had ceased from his own works as God did from his. When did God cease from his own works? Genesis chapter one, chapter two. God created the heavens and the earth, did all the things inside of them. And then the Bible says six days he did those, he did those things. And on the seventh day, he rested from his works and proclaimed all the things that he had done to be good. This was how God did it. Now think about it. Six days, God created everything. So let me ask you a question now. Does that include everything you are thinking about doing in this season? I think so. I think so. Because he created Adam on the sixth day, right? And put the seed inside of him, right? He put the seed inside of the woman. Everything that would be was already put into them. The rest was going to be the process of time unveiling it. That's rest. Your, your mindset now needs to be this. There isn't anything that you, you, you want to do that God is now going to create. Hello? Sorry, sorry. Hello? There isn't anything that you want to do or you are doing that God is now creating. In your realm, in our realm, it might seem like so, because in the material, material realm, it has to appear for your naked eyes to believe it. But faith is knowing that it already exists in the spirit or not. That is why you pray to prove, is this of God? So you pray through until you get a prophetic word of the Lord, or you have a dream, or you have a vision, or you have some manner of, uh, communication from the Father, the less you know that God is talking, it could actually also be, uh, you know, you're meditating on the scriptures and something just jumps into your spirit like that and you just feel like this is for me, okay? This is, this is, this is rest that you know that if it, if it is God, then I can check in the spirit and it will be revealed. That's rest. Because he created everything and ceased from his works. So he says, you too then must cease from your works if you will follow God. Otherwise, you will fall in the example, the same example of unbelief as the Israelites did. Okay? Think about it. This is the problem with the Israelites. Let's put it in perspective now. Abraham received a prophecy. And in that prophecy... The Lord God already told Abraham that your folks, your, your descendants, they're going to end up in captivity. But I'm going to bring them out. Think about that now. So long before God will send Moses into Egypt, 
it's already been it's already been been spoken about in 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 the you know in the history of the Israelites. The, the forefather Abraham has been been you know he, he's been spoken to, and this has been passed down. Isaac, Jacob, right? Yeah. So when Moses is sent. He sent to his forefathers, he sent to go and bring the people out. The people were crying out to God for deliverance. And God sent a prophet. That's what the prophet, one of the primary things a prophet would do is to go into darkness and bring the, those who belong to God out of the darkness by, by speaking the, the words of God, which bring light, right? And Moses goes and is speaking, and the people are excited at first to leave, but then now they start to remember their their former days in Egypt. You see, so they were they were seeing God, they had the proof, they were hearing God, but they couldn't they couldn't actually trust God. Okay, so I said second witness, verse twelve: For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a designer of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Verse 13, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. So, your second witness here is what the word of God can do. It says the word of God can pierce into your heart and make a division. You need a division when you have to make a decision. You need to know, is this my flesh? Is this, uh, is this Satan who is trying to deceive me? Or is this God? Do you understand? You need to have a division. So it's saying here that the word of God has the ability because it is, it is quick. In other words, it, it, it is... It gives life. It is sharp. It is powerful, right? Sharper than any two-edged sword. And it pierces even to the dividing asunder. Okay? Dividing asunder. It separates. So when you meditate on the word of God in fasting, you ask, you are creating a division within your heart of the things that are of God and the things that are not of God. So this is how we deal with the hindrance of unbelief. So let's pray now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this word of truth that you have given unto us. We are very much grateful that we can hear your voice. Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1 that uh, God, who in former days had spoken to us by the prophets, Today, he speaks to us by his son. Thank you for the spirit of the son that is sent into our hearts. We are believers that we have received the spirits of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Daddy. Abba, Daddy, 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 Daddy. So we cry out to you now, Daddy, that that which is ours, you have purpose to give to us today. Grant it to us. As we hear your voice, we make a commitment by your grace to follow after the spirit and not the flesh. We might hear things that we don't know about. We might hear things we don't understand. But your word teaches us that these things are not understood simply by seeing the works, but they must be understood by the heart. And to understand by the heart, sometimes we have to fast so that it can be received by the spirit man thank you that the natural things are of no interest to us we are here for the spiritual things precious holy spirit of god let your glory be revealed now we thank you 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 stalindras nandroshianda thank you holy one thank you holy one Thank you, Holy One. Thank you, Holy One. Thank you, Holy One. Shana Mandos. Thank you, Holy One.